My number 100 on my Collection of Envy list is the card that the New York Times called the prettiest card ever made. Hey, it's Mike. Thanks for tuning back in. So I promised at the beginning of my vacation that before my vacation was over, I would roll out my Collection of Envy 100. I'm still not sold on the name of this list, but it's the 100 cards that when I see them, I think, I have to have that card. And they're mostly greatest of all time conversation type guys, but there are also a couple of greatest cards of all time in here. And that's what we're gonna start with at number 100 is a card that I do not own yet, the 1953 Bowman Color Pee Wee Reese. Now there's a lot of speculation about this card over the years, but let's start with Reese. First of all, he is a Hall of Famer played for the Brooklyn Dodgers. He missed three straight seasons to war, like a lot of guys did back then. Ted Williams, Joe DiMaggio. Of course, Williams missed, I think, five seasons. But uh, Reese missed three seasons, still had a career war of 68. A lot of that was from his defense. He, was, he led the league in defensive war back then. I don't know how they calculate that stuff. Doesn't matter to me. He was a shortstop played great defense. He also got on base a lot. He stole some bases, was a good base runner. Uh, was the tandem with Jackie Robinson, a uh, double play tandem. So, you know, he's, he's pretty legendary. He won the 1955 World Series. Well, he didn't, the team did. Uh, that was the season Johnny Padres pitched the uh, complete game shutout in game seven. Something you don't see anymore. Really exciting. Um, a great time to be alive, I bet, and to be a baseball fan. 10-time uh, All-Star, Pee Wee Reese, but the card isn't so much about him. It's about the photograph, and it was unusual for the time for a baseball card to look like this and to, to be this awesome looking, I guess. Uh, there's There's been speculation over the years that um, it was it was posed he was turning two with Jackie Robinson. It was a spring training game. There's a lot of different things. Sabre Baseball Cards blog has, I believe, solved all of these questions and can give all the details. And I'm gonna point you to the blog. There are a couple things that I want you to go see in there that I'm not going to spoil. I don't wanna take the credit or, or uh, take away from clicks to that blog. Uh, so we're gonna talk through that. First of all, I wanna know, would this card be on your top 100. Would you have it higher than 100? You probably I bet the vintage collectors will because you don't know what's in the top 100. And remember, I'm, I'm gonna link to the original video that talks about this series. It is all sports. It is every sport imaginable that I could find a good card of the all-time great or uh, you know the person that everybody knew, the person families talked about around the dinner table when they were famous. But I have Reese, I have the Pokey Reese, Pokey Reese, <laughs> Pee Wee Reese at number 100 in my list. So in this, on this card, it looks like a lot of people said, well, the, the slider, the guy sliding, the base runner was running backwards or uh, sliding backwards, or it was a reverse negative. There are no outfielders visible in this photo. Saber Baseball Cards blog has figured out that while most 1953 Bowman Color cards were taken during the 1952 season, this one was actually taken in 1946, seven years before the card was released. Pretty fascinating stuff. Uh, I, I'm gonna just talk through some of the stuff I learned from that blog. First of all, I was just gonna quote the blog here for a moment. In 1946, the Brooklyn Dodgers were, would spend their spring training at City Island Ballpark in Daytona, Florida, the site of Jackie Robinson's appearance with the Montreal Royals in an historic exhibition game versus Brooklyn that same year. So pretty cool history here. This photo actually appears on the cover, uh, or a very similar version of this photo, appears on the cover of a 1946 This Week magazine and the cover of a 1950 National Police Gazette magazine. Uh, so it's pretty clear that the, this photo on the card was taken at the same time. Now the 1946 This Week magazine credits the photographer David Peskin. And so now we know 
thanks to the research done by uh, baseballcards.blog, that David Peskin was the photographer. A lot of people for a long time, you can find old forums where people say, nobody knows who took this photograph, but this seems to have been solved. It was David Peskin. And Saber Baseball Cards blog has other examples of Peskin covers that kind of confirm the style that Peskin did. And it fits. It's I'm, I'm not going to share them because I want you to go and click and see. They also have a what was considered a proof card for what was called a Dodgers in Action for 1953 Bowman Color. But it actually never, the card was never produced. So go to that blog. I'll link it in the description of this video so you can see that, that card, another great photograph. Now, who was sliding in this photo? Many people believed it was Gil Hodges or Duke Snyder. Hodges didn't play in 1946. I couldn't find if he was in spring training in 46, but it was unlikely that it was Gil Hodges. Snyder they didn't debut until 1947. Again, he could have been playing in, in spring training in 46. I couldn't find that out either. But when asked many years later, Pee Wee Reese, I keep wanting to say Pokey Reese, <laughs> Pee Wee Reese said that it was actually Stanley George Frenchy Bordegray, a player I had never heard of. I'm sure a lot of you vintage collectors have heard of Frenchy Bordegray. He was with the Dodgers until the start of the 1946 season. So where this was taken during spring training, 1946, this makes great sense. Branch Rickey said of, of Bordegray, he's either the poorest great third baseman or the greatest poor third baseman. Great quote. That is not a Yogi Berra quote. That is a Branch Rickey quote. Uh, this photograph was believed to have been posed by Peskin for the best action shot of re-sleeping with no consideration given to the, where the runner was sliding or how he had been sliding, Peskin wanted to get a photo, apparently, of Reese jumping and throwing. And this worked pretty well, even though it's kind of awkward from a baseball perspective. It is a spectacular photograph for, the, for that era. So what do these go for? The PSA 1 of this goes for around $450. Could usually be had for under $100 prior to the pandemic. It's obviously skyrocketed since then. A PSA 5 of this card goes for over $1,100 typically. So it's a pretty pricey card. I don't have one. I would love to have one. I would take it raw. Uh, I, just a card I need to have in my collection and I will be looking for it. Maybe I'll get one at the Shriner Show in uh, November or I, and I intend to go to that. Now remember, this is... Uh, <laughs> The maximum I would pay for a card on this list, the, to, to fit into this list, is $5,000. So with a $5,000 budget, which I would never pay for a card that you can get for significantly cheaper, with that $5,000 budget though, you can get up to an 8, a PSA 8. And I use PSA for all these examples because it's much easier to find sales and other things. PSA just makes it easy. Hopefully SGC will become that way at some point where I can easily just go in and see all the details. Uh, maybe an easier pop report from SGC would be great too. It's just not, not an easy pop report to navigate. The highest sale of this card ever that I was able to find publicly was a PSA 9 that sold for over $26,000 in February of 2022, right around the market peak, maybe a little later than the market peak. You gotta wonder how much one would have sold for in 2021. Uh, this one sold through Heritage Auctions, there are over 2,000 of these cards, of this card, graded by PSA. Uh, one of them, just one out of more than 2,000, came back a 10. I couldn't find any details on that 10. If you know, let me know in comments. Who has it? What's it worth? Um, has it ever sold? I, I searched and searched and searched. Couldn't find it. It's, uh, it's one of those oddities for me. For number 100, for, you know, the card that looks the best, I also considered the 1971 Topps Thurman Munson, which I think is a, another killer card. I used to own one of those raw. I sold it, uh, kind of regret it. I'll, I'll definitely pick up another one. PSA 5s routinely go for under 100 bucks on that card. It's a great looking card of another guy who deserves to be in the Hall of Fame, in my opinion. Munson, 
Great, great career. Great player. I hate to say that about Yankees, but ooh, it's true. Died way too young. So where, let me know, where would, would this fit in your list? Is this a card you want? Is this a card you have? Let me know in comments. Uh, and I think I'm going to start doing this series on Mondays or Wednesdays. Uh, anyway, er, earlier in the week, or I guess Wednesday's kind of midweek, but you get, you get the point. So thanks very much for watching. Happy Labor Day, everybody. It is Labor Day. I have a lot of housework to do, yard work outside. And uh, heading out now. Talk to you all soon.